Hello, 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 hello. The time has come to do a real problem about electricity and magnetism. One of my favorite problems. It's really not a high school problem, so don't feel bad if you can't do it. You're allowed, of course, to consult my lectures, to consult the web, everything is allowed because you may learn some physics. And if you really can't hack it, that's okay, don't feel bad about it. What's my solutions? And then you may learn some physics. Okay, you ready for this? Take a look. Here is a circuit. Resistance R1, resistance R2. Between point A and point B is here a voltmeter V1 and here also attached to point A and B is a voltmeter V2. Both have their plus sides on the A side and their negative sides on the B side. All wires that you see, which are those straight lines, all of them, have totally negligible resistances. These are copper wires, their resistances are probably way less than one tenth of a thousand of an ohm. So forget them completely. They can absolutely be ignored. When you think about the fact that R1 is 1 ohm and R2 is 10 ohm. Out of this plane, in this direction, perpendicular to the plane, is an electromagnet. Here you see a view in this direction. So here you see the electromagnet, you see the wires, I have a switch in there that I can turn the electromagnet on. It's connected to a battery, so current will build up, magnetic field will build up, and when the current reaches a maximum, the magnetic field remains constant. So what you see here, this is the end of the electromagnet. You're looking down in this direction, you see it here. Not only can you ignore the resistance of the wires, but you can also completely ignore any possible inductance of those wires. If you take one meter of copper wire, then its inductance is less than a tenth of a millionth of a Henry. So forget about that. Completely. As I turn the magnet on, magnetic field will increase and then reach a maximum. As it increases, the magnetic flux in this area will change. And that means, according to Faraday's law, I will induce an EMF in any closed loop that contains this flux change. There will probably be an extremely weak magnetic field here, but that is so weak compared to what is in the center here that you can ignore any magnetic flux changes in this area and in this area. It really is only here. So, I turn on the electromagnet and I record with some very fancy instruments, and these are not imaginary instruments, they really exist. And I have done this. I can't do it here at home, but I have done it more than once. I record then both the value of V1 
and the value of N2, including polarity. It's polarity sensitive, this demonstration. I record it with a time accuracy, a time resolution of about a tenth of a millisecond. It has to be that fast because the time that it takes for this electromagnet to reach its maximum magnetic field is very short. It may only be five or ten milliseconds. And of course, if the magnetic field is constant, then there will be no longer any induced EMF in the circuit. So then V1 and V2 obviously go to zero. So my time resolution of a tenth of a millisecond. And I have that recorded and I make a nice print of them. I see in front of me a print how V1 and V2 change in time. I pick a particular time that I notice that V1 is minus 0.3 volts. And my first question now is, what will V2 be at that moment in time? That's the first question. Now comes the second question. You see here, the same circuit. R1 is again 1 ohm, R2 is 10 ohms, and the voltmeters again have very high resistances of about 10 to the 8 ohms. Again, V1 is attached to point A and point B. And V2 is also attached to point A and point B, but in a different way than it is attached here. Look, V2 is attached here to A, and right here, it is connected to point B. All these straight wires, including this loop here, have zero resistance. Of course, this loop here indicates that this wire and this one are not in electrical contact, of course. It's just an easy notation to make you aware of it, that there's no connection here. So again, I power my electromagnet. I record V1 and V2 in time. I make a nice print of it, and I look again at the moment that V1 is minus 0.3 volts. And the question now is, what is V2? If both your answers are correct, then I will certainly not post them. That's my general approach. If both are wrong, then oh, you can be sure that I will post them. I don't know yet what I will do if one of your answers is right and the other is wrong. If I decide for whatever reason not to post them, then it may not mean that both your answers were correct. That's all I want you to know now. I haven't decided yet and I I really don't know yet what I will be doing. It's not so important now. Problem is not as easy as many of you may think, but it's a real classic. Believe me, it's a real classic. Have a nice day, take care, and uh, I hope that when you see the solutions, that you may still want to be friends with me. <laughs>